If a colony needs a new queen bee, one thing I can do is to order a queen from a bee breeder and get the new queen delivered to me in the mail. The queen arrives in a little cage with her attendant bees and a bit of candy for food. Then I introduce the queen to the colony to see if they will accept her. If they don't like her, they will kill her almost immediately. But if they do like her, they will start to surround her and take care of her like they're doing here. The queen bee doesn't do anything for herself so that she can focus on her one job laying eggs. She has a group of attendant bees that follows her everywhere. They clean her and feed her and take care of all of What I like to do is start by just putting some hot water, squirting it onto my scalp. Sometimes the water gets away from you and you try and catch as much as you can. And I just work the water up through to the end of my hair. And I take my no rinse shampoo and squirt it also on the scalp, just a little bit. And sometimes I'll actually take my comb to help work it all the way to the ends. And I like to take my towel while I have the shampoo in there and just kind of work it. Because without standing under running water, you kind of need to use the towel a little bit to help get some of the dirt out. I think that's pretty good. And now as my hair dries, as the water evaporates from my hair, uh, it will uh, become humidity in the air and then our air conditioning system will collect uh, that into condensate and it won't be long and our water processing system will turn that into drinking water. This is just regular earth gravity. You can see I have pretty good traction. If I get going too fast, then I can start skidding. 
70 miles an hour hitting this. <laughs> oh man. Let's see what it would be like to drive on the moon now. The first thing you'll notice is look how much harder it is to get any traction. You can barely turn or do anything. Let's see what it does on the moon. <laughs> That's a good toss. Oh man. <laughs> it's not that bad. Windows aren't even broken. Let's see what it would look like if we were on Jupiter. Let's see the change from negative 1.62 gravity to Jupiter. <laughs> 24.92. Okay, let's see if we can even drive under this. So it's a little harder to drive, easy to stop and turn, get good traction here. <laughs> I can't even get any hair at all. <laughs> oh man. <laughs> Okay, let's try a jump. Here we go. <laughs> Just <laughs> dropped like a rock. I should say a rock on Jupiter. <laughs> let's up the ante a little bit and go for the sun. <laughs> let's see what it looks like trying to drive on the sun. Three, two, one. <laughs> oh man. 274 versus Jupiter, so that's 10 times stronger gravity than Jupiter. Notice our crash dummy can't even sit up. He's just flattened down there. <laughs> so for the sun, I don't think we'll be able to see what it looks like to go off a jump because we can't even move. But let's try to get the truck in the air, see what it would look like to drop something on the sun. Negative Earth, everything just starts flying up. Turn it back to Earth and drop. <laughs> okay, so that's what happens dropping it from Earth gravity. Okay, fallen up and sun. <laughs> Holy cow! <laughs> so if you drop something on the sun, it's gone. So let's try even less gravity. Let's try Pluto. Okay, here we go. There we go. <laughs> Look how far it went. Okay, see how much damage it does when it hits the ground. So the weight is so much less than on Earth. It shouldn't be that bad. Oh, especially if it lands on the wheels. <laughs> That's gonna hit the bridge. Ooh, barely missed it. <laughs> There's like no damage whatsoever to it. So by simply coming up, having the door closed, opening the door, what do we do? We create a ventilation induced flashover. So now what we're going to cover is we're going to cover that t technique called 3D in the door. So for one more time, door is closed, I open it, the gas is ignited. So let's cover 3D in the door. I'm gonna come up, I'm gonna close the door, and I'm gonna put moisture around that door, okay? So I'm putting moisture all around that door. And then also what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna have my door firefighter, he's gonna crack the door, I'm gonna put moisture inside, and then I'm simply gonna close the door. And then once again, I'm continuously putting moisture around that door. So now, when I open the door earlier, as soon as I open the door, what happened? The fire gas is ignited. We had a ventilation-induced flashover. To where now the gases are going to ignite but you can see how drastically we slow the environment down by putting moisture around the door and putting a little bit of moisture inside <laughs>